And so we've been talking about the Kingdompreneur series. What is a Kingdompreneur? Let's talk about that. What is a Kingdompreneur? Now, the word Kingdompreneur, I'm sure, is a made-up name, a made-up word. I'm sure others have used it before me. Uh, But what it is, it's a combination of two very powerful words. The first word, uh, the second part, is entrepreneur. That's the first word I want to talk about tonight. So an entrepreneur is someone who comes up with businesses. You start businesses, you start ideas, you start strategies, you look for new and creative ways to make money. If you're an entrepreneur, feel free to put something out there, put something out there. Say something, say, what up? I'm an entrepreneur. That's what an entrepreneur is. Well, the other word, which is the first part of this new word that we're putting together is the word kingdom, kingdom. Now, if you're not a part of Christianity or, or, or biblical things, uh, you, you might not know what kind of kingdom we're talking about. And so we're talking about the kingdom of God. And we're not being weird and spooky or anything like that. The kingdom of God pretty much means God's interpretation of his heavenly throne here on earth. It is like a demonstration of heaven here on earth. In other words, if Jesus were down here doing business, doing life, touching lives, touching people, in any way you can imagine, what would that look like? That is the kingdom of God. And so those of us who are following Jesus, those of us who believe in the Bible, uh, we don't just want to sit in the room and, and do Bible study verses on how we can become spiritual. We also want to find out what God says about how can we be effective in the natural realm as well. Because, hey, let's face it, we are natural. I am natural. You are natural. This is skin right here on my body. These lips, I can feel them. I can touch them. I am physical, but deep down inside of me, there's a different realm that is coexisting with my existence, and that is the spiritual realm. And so God works through that spiritual realm inside of us. He works through a relationship that we have with him, and it is manifested or it comes out as we live on this earth, as we live, as we move, as we breathe, and as we have our being, but also as we function with everybody else on this planet. You know, God desires that we get along. He wants us all to get along. The Bible says, uh, above all, do your best to live peaceably with all men. Do your best to live peaceably with all all men. So a kingdompreneur is someone who is an entrepreneur. You start businesses, you find creative ways of making money, empowering yourself, empowering others, but you do it from a kingdom perspective. Now, what is the kingdom perspective? The kingdom perspective, of course, has to do with a lifestyle where we are preparing for eternity. We are preparing for life after we leave this earth because life will continue after we leave this earth. Now, where that life will continue, that depends on your choice and your decision. And so that is why those of us who are Christians and followers of Jesus Christ, we are excited because we have been promised life after death in a great place. What a wonderful retirement plan. But a, but the kingdom is, is also how we can benefit others. You know, the Bible says that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. In fact, the Bible says we should love our enemies. We should pray for our enemies. <clears throat> we should do everything we can to be a blessing to everyone around us, whether they are treating us good, whether they are treating us bad, that is the kingdom of God. And we're living in a time and a day right now where it is tempting. It is very tempting to start hating other people. Let's be honest. People who have done terrible things to you or trifling things to you or or just horrible things in your community or to your culture, it's very tempting to say, well, the answer is to retaliate with hatred and bitterness and anger, but that is not the kingdom. The kingdom of God requires that we share the same love that God shared with us. Let me ask you a question. Are you perfect? Are you without sin? If you're not, you can't cast the first stone. And so it's important that we love each other. So a kingdompreneur is someone who seeks to develop creative strategies and new ideas to not only propel themselves forward, but to also propel others forward with them. 
Do you see the difference there? Awesome stuff. Now, once again, feel free, start posting some things. I mean, say something. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Say, preach it, brother. Say, shut up and sit down. Whatever you feel like saying, go ahead and put it up there. If it's too mean or too crass or negative, you will be deleted. You will be removed because, you know, we're not out here hating on folk. We're trying to help people. So tonight, the title of what I'm sharing with you is what? This little piggy. This little piggy. So we're going to go ahead and see our picture here of this little piggy. Go ahead and check it out. We've got some cute little piggies, oink, oink. And they're just kind of chilling and they're just kind of hanging out. And they're there kind of doing their thing. And so tonight, uh, as we go into our presentation, we're going to be talking about these lovely, lovely little piggies, little piggies. Now, before we go into the piggy thing, I want to go ahead and drop a scripture verse on you. Uh, Kingdompreneur nomics or kingdom nomics, economics and kingdom. I mean, that's probably didn't work out too well. But let's see what you know. God kind of says his ec economics, kingdom economics, which is the kind of economics that we use in the kingdom. Let's go ahead and put that verse up here. So the, the verse that I have uh, for you today, if we can go ahead and put that up. All right. And this verse here is in the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to go ahead and get that up there on your screen if we can. Uh, if not, um, um, it, it'll be up there soon. And so God is telling us in the scripture that we are called to be the head and not the tail. We are called to be above and not beneath. And then it says that when, when God pours out his blessings, he wants his people to be the lender and not the borrower the lender and not the borrower. What's the difference between a lender and a borrower? Well, if you are a borrower, that means you are in a position where you have a need. You are in a position where you need help from someone else. And there's nothing wrong with getting help, but we should not always have to get help in every area of our lives for all of our lives. God wants us to come to the place where as people, okay, whether you are a Christian or you're not a Christian, God wants us to come to a place where we are self-sufficient. We can take care of ourselves. We can handle ourselves financially, right? And so we see this verse here, I believe it's in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, it says, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, all right? If you pay attention to his commandments. But the verse before that is the one that I want us to put up there. And that verse says that you will be the lender and not the borrower. So a, a borrower is someone who is in a position where they have to receive in order for them to move forward, in order for them to invest, in order for them to build their strategy or build their idea, they have to rely on someone else to help them do it. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with getting help from time to time. In fact, our whole entire series, our whole entire course is about helping each other, all right? Helping each other to move forward and to move ahead spiritually, but also financially, to move forward financially in our lives. And so that's the position of a borrower. A borrower is kind of waiting to receive. Now, a lender, if you are a lender, then by definition, uh, you are in a position you are in a position where you are able to help someone else. So lender, borrower, two different types of people, uh, uh, but they're in two different places in their life, two different positions in their life. So you want to be a lender because if you are a lender, that means technically you have enough for yourself and you have enough to help others. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, give me a moment here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that verse up and look for that. All right. So we can have that tonight until we can get it up here on the screen. Uh, and that is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. And it says, I will pour out uh, from the windows of heaven. I will make it rain up upon you abundantly so that you would be a lender and not a Borrowers. So let's go into this. We've got our little friends here. You see our little piggies? Say, what's up, piggy? What's up, piggies? How y'all doing? They go to piggies right there. And so we're going to talk about these little piggies um, a little bit tonight. I've got three examples 
of the pigs that we're going to talk about. How many of y'all like pig? You just like some of y'all like pigs as pets, and that's all right. Some of y'all like the bacon or whatever it is, the, the fat back, the pig snout. I don't know what you like to eat. Uh, but anyway, there are the pigs, okay? Now, there's a nursery rhyme that, that many of us remember from back in the day, and it simply said, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee, wee, wee all the way home. So that's what we're talking about tonight. We're actually coming from that nursery rhyme and we're going to speak about business. Let me tell you something. I'm not sure if anybody else has done this. I think this is an original. Only only Pastor John Doss would be crazy enough to maybe come up with something like that. I've, I've never heard that before from a business standpoint, but this is powerful. When, when God dropped this on me, because God can give us creative ideas, he can give us witty ideas, he can give us special ideas. When God dropped this on me, boom, I knew we had something there. This thing hit, it hit hard like an atomic bomb. So let's break it down. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee, wee, wee all the way home. Let's break down the piggies. So as we go into this, I want you to understand something here. One of the, the challenges that we see around the world, because once again, this is kingdom, kingdomnomics, kingdomnomics, and we are kingdompreneurs, okay? So one of the challenges that we see around the world is that there are people who are living in poverty around the world because a big part of what we want to do is to elevate and bring people out of poverty. OK, here in America, sometimes we complain and we argue because they don't have the blue shoes. They only had the green ones. Uh, we're upset because we didn't get the, the iPhone 12. We got the iPhone 11 instead. Well, there's some people around the world who have no shoes, no phone, no food, no housing. And God promised that he would take care of them. He did. He promised his eyes on the sparrow. He promised it would rain on the just and the unjust. And so those of us who have it, we're supposed to be a blessing to those who don't. And trust me, I'm not talking about a welfare system where you just hand people stuff. We're not looking for a hand out. We're looking for a hand up. So we can develop people and bring them to a place where they can become successful on their own. But there's a lot of people who are living in poverty, listen to me, and they have no reason to live in poverty because they have resources all around them. Africa as a continent in general is said to be the most resourceful continent on the planet that has so much natural resources, uh, or should I say one of the most resourceful uh, uh, continents on the planet. I don't want other countries arguing with me or upset with me, but I think we can agree that, that Africa is one of those continents that's not maximizing its wealth, not maximizing its resources. Why? Because they're having a difficult time getting their products to the market. Transportation, storage, protection, coverage, all the things you can imagine can hinder someone from getting their cotton to the market, getting their gold to the market, getting their diamonds to the market, uh, getting their products. I mean, sometimes uh, products can spoil by the time they get to the market. So some of the more developed areas of the world in Africa is very developed in certain parts. So don't get me wrong, but some of the more developed areas in the world is not because we have so much, but we've developed strategies of protection to protect what we have, to preserve what we have, and to move it. Do you know white bread? There's no such thing as white wheat. So white bread uh, was mankind's way of preserving the shelf life of bread. Uh, it, I, I hear it's not good for you compared to the natural wheat or the natural bread, but they had to find a way to preserve the shelf life. And so here in the United States and in Europe and other countries, um, we have food that actually lasts longer. <clears throat> Sometimes it looks better because of the technology that we use. I'm not saying that technology is healthy. I'm just showing you a principle that we can ship stuff all over the nation. It's not going to spoil. Sometimes something as small as a refrigerated truck, you might not have that in an impoverished nation. Uh, so even strategies of how to make sure your livestock doesn't die and all of that. So here's the point. This little piggy went to market. 
So for our example today, the little piggies, they represent business ideas. The little piggies represent business strategies. The little piggies represents money or ways to get money. Now you can have these piggies, but if you can't get your piggy to market, your piggy won't make money for you. If you can't get your piggy in front of buyers, come on now. If you can't get your piggy out there where the piggy can perform, then the piggy does nothing for you. So this little piggy went to market. That's the goal. We're trying to get our piggies to market. Some of you have ideas that you might live with and God forbid die with because you can't get the piggy out your house. You can't get your piggy out your head. You can't get your idea out of your mind and get it into the marketplace where it can start making money for you. You know, some of the products out there are not necessarily the best products, but the companies who put them out there were able to find a way to get their little piggy to market. So this little piggy went to market. Then this little piggy stayed home. That represents those ideas, those strategies, those businesses that simply did not go anywhere. Anybody out there honest enough to say you tried a business, it didn't work, you had a strategy, you couldn't get it off the ground, maybe somebody stole it from you or it just didn't happen. So that's that's that one. One of them little piggies right there is the joker that stayed home. You see these lovely little piggies? So one of them stayed home. Let me tell you something. We don't need our little piggy staying home. We need our little piggy coming out of the house. We, we need our little piggy going to the market, going to the market. So now this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. Let's talk about that. What is the roast beef? The roast beef represents, <clears throat> the, ro the roast beef represents your business idea having the nourishment that it needs to succeed. The roast beef represents business education. The roast beef represents having the right tools in order for your piggy to get out there to the market. The, the roast beef has to do with being robust, okay? The roast beef means robust. That means a well-fed idea, well-fed thoughts, well-fed strategies. You know, before you send that little piggy out there to the market, that little piggy is strong enough to make the journey. You see, if, you're, if your little piggy does not have roast beef, if your little piggy doesn't have nourishment, you might send your little piggy out to the market and your little piggy dies along the way, or uh, the big bad wolf comes out and gets your little piggy. This little piggy went to market. That's what we want. This little piggy stayed home. That's what we don't want. This little piggy had roast beef. That's what we want. We want to be educated. We want to have everything that we need in place so our idea, our strategy actually makes it to the market and then it doesn't fail. So then this little piggy had none. That's the fourth little piggy. So the fourth little piggy is that really excited person. Ooh, I want to start a, a hair salon. Ooh, I'm going to start a, a painting business. Ooh, I'm going to go out here and fry me some fish. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you have no strategy. You have no business license. You have no insurance. You, 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 you about to get sued by somebody. Come on now. You about to get sued because in Jesus name, you trying to be a kingdom preneur and you're being a kingdom manure. Amen. So you're not fulfilling that purpose. And so this little piggy had none is when we jump the gun and we get excited and we think that our idea is strong enough all by itself. Oh, this is a winning idea. This is going to make it out there. This is just going to happen. And you haven't given any roast beef to your piggy. You haven't thought the thing through. You haven't prayed the thing through. You haven't done any of those things for your little piggy. All you've done is you've had the idea and you just run with it. Now, let me tell you something. I might sound a little harsh to you right now. I might be offending some people. You might be turning me off and saying, I'm not coming back on Friday or Saturday. I don't want to hear what you have to say because you, you hurting my feelings. Look, let me hurt your feelings, but pad your pockets. Come on now. Let me hurt your feelings, but pad your pockets. Can I get an amen? Man on that because here's what it boils down to. Here's what it boils down to. I've done the same thing. I am so passionate about this. Uh, I think in my business life, I've probably lost more money than I've made. That's what it felt. That's what it feels like. I have lots of experiences, lots of experience running out there, 
with this great idea, this great strategy, but I didn't give my little piggy enough roast beef. <laughs> so piggy ran out of steam. Piggy, piggy ran out of energy. Piggy ran out. Maybe I ran out of excitement. And now piggy going to fall over dead on the side of the road. Okay. So this is, this is where we are. This is where we're going with this. Let's just go ahead and break this down. All right. And I appreciate you all checking in. I hope you're all enjoying this. Keep sending your comments in. All right. Keep letting us know that you're out there. Spread the word before. Uh, I mean, during this and also after, after this. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So now this little piggy went to market. That's what we want. This little piggy stayed home. That's what we don't want. Because if your idea is at home with you, it's not out there making money. This little piggy had roast beef. That's what we want. That's what we need. And that's what Kingdompreneur is all about. We want to give y'all some roast beef so you can have some, some education. You can have some strategies. You can have a sound foundation so your piggy has the best opportunity of making it to the market. This little piggy had none. That's what we don't want. We don't want to just go out here in excitement and, and throw our business idea out there and, and, and run amok. Come on, run amok because we did not put enough roast beef into that piggy. And here's the last one, and I'm almost done for tonight. This little piggy went wee, wee, wee all the way home. What is that one? That is that business idea that didn't make it. Mm. That is that thing that lost you money. Come on now. You got to the market. You were out there. But because you didn't plan properly, you didn't have the right strategy, You know, maybe you didn't have your insurance, you know, I, I have an idea I might share with y'all depending upon timing, but but we don't want to go through the process of investing our time, money, effort, energy. If you're anything like me, you're a hardworking person. Sometimes I'm working 60 to 70 hours a week. And once I learn how to budget, save up my money, get my credit where it needs to be or however your journey is, you don't have to have all those things. It's helpful to have all those things, but I don't want to take my hard earned money that I save and put in place to go out into the market and to have my little piggy come wee, wee, wee all the way home to come back on me and not fulfill what it's supposed to do. And the Bible says that his word does not return unto him void. When God speaks his word, when God declares his word and puts his word out there, his word never goes wee, wee, wee all the way home. His word goes to market and it stays there. His word transforms lives, transforms people. His word is, is it, it's never, uh, is, his word has roast beef. That means it has substance to it. His word, come on now, never returns to him void. And that's how we want to be <clears throat> even as people. So I'm excited. <clears throat> so I'm, uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and close off tonight. If y'all want a little bit more, just tell me something in the chat. I've got something else I can share with you. If not, I'll go ahead and close. I don't want to bore you people, but if you've got another five to 10 minutes, I've got more. I would love to share. Let me see. But y'all got to, y'all got to make some comments. Say, yes, sir. We want it. We don't want it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go for it because we're online anyway. Some of y'all laying in your bed. You don't have to worry about traffic or nothing like that. Some of y'all are eating your, your, uh, your snacks and you're chilling. So I'm going to go ahead and drop another example about pigs. Tonight's all about pigs, this little piggy. So we're going to talk about um, the three little pigs. And there they are right there. There it is. There it is. The three little pigs. Yeah. We're going to talk about the three little pigs. And if you remember uh, the story of the three little pigs, the three little pigs finally got to the place where uh, they thought they were ready. Okay, anybody ever been there? Put something in the comments. Come on now. The three little pigs finally got to the place where they thought they were ready. They thought they were grown. They thought they were prepared to handle this world and to deal with the stuff that's out there. And so the, the three little pigs went out there and they decided uh, they were going to build their businesses. They decided they were going to start something that was going to benefit them or benefit others or whatever. So they went out there. And so we've got three little pigs. Now, um, uh, the, I almost said the word says, this ain't the word. This is just a story. Okay. So according to this story, this children's story, the first little piggy, he went out there and he built his house out of straw. And that's what a lot of us do. We find the cheapest product. Come on now. 
the cheapest things, the easiest way of doing things, and we just go in and hurry up. We got to make money. Hurry up. We got to do business. Hurry up. And we don't give our businesses the right kind of structure that they need. And so the first little piggy, he went out there and he built his house of straw. It was comfortable. It was nice. He was taking selfies in front of it. You know, it didn't cost him a whole lot of money. But then the market, come on now, because the market, look, the market is not just there to, 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 to give to you, right? The market is also there to take from you. When you enter the market, it's not just the opportunity to sell. It's also the opportunity to compete with others. And so the big bad wolf represents competition. I don't care if you're selling drugs or you're selling marshmallows. There's somebody out there who's already selling something and they're competing with you and you're competing with them. And a part of that competition is unless you, you have a good strategy, unless you have things in place, you will not survive competition. There will always be competition. But, but our goal as business people, right, is to benefit from the market to the point where our our goals are fulfilled, whether we're trying to become a millionaire, a billionaire, or, you know, for me, I'll tell you one of my goals, if I can get to $300,000 a year, that's one of my goals, one of my goals. I'm nowhere close to that right now. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with being a billionaire, but can I can I become a thousandaire? Some of us need, some of us are just air, right? So can we get become a hundred air, a thousandaire, or something like that? So as we set our goals and we enter into the market, you know, our business idea, our business strategy, um, our business platform needs to be strong enough to survive the market because the big bad wolf is out there. So the big bad wolf represents competition. The big bad wolf represents, you know, just that struggle for time management, you know, because you can have a great idea, but there's only 24 hours in a day for all of us. And as human beings, some of us can't go the whole 24 hours. You got to sleep. You got to rest. If not, you won't be here. You won't be alive uh, to see your business flourish. You won't be alive to see what the end of the race looks like. So, so, so here we, so that the big bat wolf represents competition. Uh, it represents the difficulties of the market, struggles, tribulations. To be honest, the big bat wolf can represent your family because you've got to share time with them. And anything that steals time away from your business development can be seen as the big bat wolf. Also, the big bat wolf are taxes. Come on now. Taxes, paperwork, registration. Some of us are so uh, ignorant to those things, let's be honest, or we're so afraid of those things, we would rather just have a hustle. We'd rather sell it on the side. We're selling Bibles on the side, and we're so afraid and fearful of paperwork. A part of the Kingdompreneur series, we want you to be able to embrace the paperwork. Come on now. Those folk who are out there doing business, it's not that most of them are smarter than you. Some of them might be, but it's not that most of them are smarter than you. They've just found a way to put their paperwork together. That's right. They got their stuff together. That's what they got. And we don't. We have these great ideas. We want to make money. Well, you've got to take the time to get your stuff together. But it can be seen as a big bad wolf. We feel very apprehensive, some of us, to go into certain industries because we don't understand them or we don't know how to do the paperwork or we don't know how to. Let me tell you something. Nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, the people who are doing great business don't know how to do all of that stuff either. They have professionals. They have people that they pay or people that they partner with, are you follow me, to handle some of those things. So partnerships can be critical. Partnerships can be helpful, especially in the areas where you are weak. Somebody else might be strong. There's no way you can learn every aspect of business. No human being, or should I say there are very, hu very few human beings that can come to the point where they can comprehend and become proficient with every aspect of business. And even as the, as the kingdompreneur, as the entrepreneur or the business owner, you find where you fit best. Some business owners, their role is just to do the sales. You be the sales force. You be the front face of the business. Stick to that. For others, it's the paperwork. They're not good at sales, but they can crunch those numbers. They can do that paperwork. They can handle that administration. And for some others, it's technology. They're just good with computer stuff. But either way, let me tell you something. Woo! A good business is a good business. And a good business does not just include the product. 
Come on. It includes the customer service. It includes the support, the back end, the advertising, the marketing, the follow up. So all of that is necessary. But we see those things as the big bad wolf. And here's what happens. The big bad wolf approaches your straw business, your straw house, your thrown together stuff that you throw some anointing oil and say in Jesus name. Right. And then the market blows on it. Your business can't survive the market. Your business can't survive that competition. And the big bat wolf blows it down. Then you have the one who made uh, their house out of sticks. All right. We've got the three little pigs here. And the story goes on. The one with the sticks means they did a better job, but they still cut some corners. Come on. They did more than the last guy. <clears throat> but let me tell you something. The thing that got, oh, I, 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 I got to get the big screen for this. Come on now. The thing that God has called you to do is going to require a brick house. That's right. It's going to require a solid structure. Don't build this thing just to bless you and your family. Don't build this thing just to bless you and your congregation. Build this thing to bless the world. Come on, build this thing. So it's so solid and so strong that, that here's where, you ready for this? Because the, the whole reason I'm doing this series is because of this. Build this thing so you will be prepared to receive the transfer of wealth. Come on now. God promised he's going to transfer wealth from the unrighteous to the righteous. And the problem is, it's not that we're just we're not righteous enough or we're not holy enough. The problem is this. I love that brick house. The problem is this. We're not prepared enough. We're not ready. <clears throat> we are not ready. That's right. In fact, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 is our theme verse for johndoss.com. The theme verse. So you hit it right there in the spirit. That is our theme verse, Matthew 7, 24, building your house upon the rock, building your house upon the solid, solid foundation. And so your house is not just your business. Your house is your life. It's everything. Uh, but your house also is your business as well. Amen. So we're going to get to close out here soon. We had a great time with the pigs. Remember the first story we put out there. If you missed it, go back and watch this. The second story, the big bad wolf. And we see that not only could the big bad wolf not blow down the brick house. Ready for this? But the brick house became a blessing to the other two pigs as well. Do you see the revelation in that? That's powerful. Come on. The brick house was so well put together. It didn't just bless brother pig. Come on now. Bishop pig. But it blessed all the other pigs, even the ones who failed, even the ones who did the wrong thing, even the ones who didn't listen to their older brother. He was willing to open his doors and be a blessing to them. Why? Because he was a lender, not a borrower. What he built was so solid and so well structured. It didn't just benefit self. It was able to benefit others. Thank you for watching. This is John Doss at johndoss.com. You are watching the Kingdompreneur series, and we're talking about the movement of wealth because we want the wealth to be moved towards you. I'll see you again uh, on Friday night, and then we've got a big thing going on Saturday night. Go to johndoss.com for the updates. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you all later.